back to the channel. It's Jonah here at Pilot's Garage. First thing I have to go through and so I tell you that my wife's not happy with me. So the shirts that I wore, well, this shirt is one of the one I got for my birthday. And the last episode I decided to weld the cross member. And as you can see in the video here, I now have a hole in my shirt because the weld burnt through it. So roll of thumb. I always wear garage clothes in the garage because um, if not your wife gets a little upset that you burned a hole through one of your birthday gifts but uh, you're in trouble you're in trouble so anyways in this episode I am going to attempt to make the motor mounts so this is the factory um, Ford Maverick six cylinder mount. Uh, I'll grab one of these. These are the mounts you need if you put a V8 in a Maverick. They look like this. But this is the six cylinder. So it bolts into the side of the frame with these three bolt holes, and then it actually goes up over that the cross member that's sent in there, and then the motor mount comes in and it slides through this hole and sets, and there's a nut in the back. But I tried to use this because this thickness is almost an inch. Let's see here. So it almost gives me the thickness I need for the motor mount for this. So I tried. I ground it down. Let me see where I ground it all. There was a there was a 45 here that I cut off, hoping that if I put it on backwards, it would give me the the distance I need. Um, yeah, I was wrong. It doesn't. So. What I did was I took this and I laid it on a piece of flat metal and got this. So if you look, this is the this gives me the, the bolt hole and the pattern I need for the cross member. So I wanted to, to strengthen it up, so what I'm doing to do is we're gonna put this on one side and this on the other. But you know what? Let me grab here. We'll pretend this is the, the cross member that you see on the strut tire. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this, and it'll bolt on this side, and then this will bolt on this side. It'll stick up like, just like that, and kind of like a sandwich. So the bolts will go through, through here, which will give you your strength, the clamp wise. So then what I need to do is I'm going to take a piece of flat bar. And I will weld this one here, and I need four inches. So basically, I need this. It'll come out to here, but I need another, probably the, the twice the distance. So it'd be like that much extra sticking out the end of it. And so I'll cut this off. Um, I'll drill a hole in it, and then we'll weld this one to here. And then the motor mount's actually back here. So if you are a 240 guy. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you know where we're going with this. So, in the 240 realm, you can take your mount motor mounts out, and actually, you 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 would use two of these. This is a hockey puck. So, hockey puck. The material hockey puck's made out of has a little bit of, you probably can't see that, has a little bit of flex to it. So what you do is you drill a hole through the center of this and you use this for your motor mount. So this, once I get the hole drilled, will sit on top of this and then the motor mount on the engine will sit on top of that and then there'll be a bolt that goes the whole way through this. And this will give you that, just that little bit of play. But a lot of the 240 guys will use these because they're cheap. I got a whole box of uh, two, four, six, six of them, so I paid a dollar each for these. Shipped to my house. So I do know the driver's side, I need an inch. So this is an inch thick. The passenger side, I have to redouble, re measure, do my measurements, but I believe it's three quarters of an inch. If that's the case, I'm going to have to cut this, 
this way. I have to cut a quarter inch off of it to get the other side. But stay tuned. I'm going to do a couple more measurements and then I'll bring you guys back and show you what we're doing. Hang on there. Alright, so as you can see, let me crawl in the engine bay here and get in your way. All that stuff. Bruh. Now, as you can see, this right here is that plate that I was showing you earlier. And then this is the bracket on the car. So if we take our bolt, put a washer on it, I don't want the puck in here like that. So. Get my fat hand out of the way. So this will go in here. Just like so. And then you get the, just like that. Now what I'll do is I'll drill a hole into the metal plate I have. Um and I'll slide it in here between them and put it onto the bolt and that'll give me where I need to be and then I'll weld here on the other side. So. Gives you a general idea. All right, oh, I'm back, yep. After a many money fight here, this is what we ended up with. So, here's the bracket. There's the puck bolted to the engine. Now what I'll do is I will this will pick up. No, I can't do it with one hand. This bracket will pick up. This will push down. And I'll be able to weld across here on this bracket. And then back here, I don't know if you can see it right here, my finger is. I'll put a tack weld back there. And then once I do that, I will unbolt the motor mount. Unbolt the whole assembly, get it out here in the ground, weld it all up. Then I should be able to just put it right back in there, bolt it in, and this side will be done. The engine's where it belongs. And I can start working on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll get this welded up. Alright, so got her all bubblegum welded up. Looks horrible. But that is welded together and bolted in, and it is holding its own weight now. Engine doesn't move, so I am going to work on the other side and hopefully get it done soon. And then should be able to bolt everything in tight and just leave the engine hang on its own and keep moving forward. And then later on, I will pull those back out, grind them flush, and then uh, I'll probably go to Todd's up at Unwrecked and weld them with uh, the good water just so they're solid. But all right, time to go through this whole mess on the other side now. Stay tuned. Okay, after much trial and error, I was using these plates for the, the two sides of the frame rail and then I was welding a piece of a tongue across the end of it. So I ran out of flat stock because I messed up the side. And when I put these bolts in on this one, it's just too short. So I decided to trace it out in this piece of flat metal. And instead of using the grinder, I am going to use my sawzall. Let me get this cut out, and then when we come back, I'll we're gonna try to bend this where this line is right here. It's to bend that tab over, and then after I do that, I'll see how it fits in the car, and then we can drill the holes. Stay tuned. I figured before I get going here, I'd show you the. So I got the pattern. Oh. You see the pattern that comes just. You can't really see my fingers that way. Here we go. So the pattern comes up. It's this triangle. And then there's the, the thing. At every junction, I had to drill a hole in order for the blade to go in. And then it allow me to go up this way. And then I'll drill a hole up here, go that way, and vice versa. I drilled from here to here. I had to drill a hole 
to go from here to here. Drill a hole and go from here to here. So that way it's straight, straight lines and I'll have to try to, um, try to like round off the corners or to make it whatever. But this also is actually working a lot better than the, the grinder because I'm not covered in dust. But let me get this finish cut out. Here, I'll just, let's just, let's just do this. Just watch me cut a hole. Should be able to see this. Okay, so as you can see, I went past the the line, and I'll show you why. Because when I drill this, if I drill here, it's going to um, make the corner rounded. So you have to go just past your line. And then that'll allow me to start the next turn. Starting to like get floppy. Oh, you'll see some over on too. So I'll grab a pair of vice grips because here's what's happening. As you can see, this is starting to get it's it's starting to get loose. So Take another pair of vice grips. You tighten that up. See now it tightens the metal up. Which in turn should tighten this up. So it also keeps this from falling out. So now if you pull this off, there it is. It's so much better than the, using the grinder. Back yet. So it's so much better than using the grinder. So this was my template. This is what I used for the to get that angle. It's like a, there we go. Because this was short, so if you look here, it was shorter here. So what I did was I took this and I moved it straight up on the there. So that gives me that much extra. And then I put I knew what this angle right here is. I um put this into the car and then I put a flat piece to find out where the flat part was. And I know this goes. So
Now that we do all that. Now, here's where the fun part begins. So I gotta bend this on this line. And I'm not sure. Oh, look at that. My voice will work. So. Get her squared up in there. Oh, the fun part. I just want to see if it'll bend. Another thing, because I look like I want too far, you can take a crescent wrench. And get just a tweak a little bit. Now, next part you'll see is we test fit it in the car. Okay, so there's the finished product. Doing it that way. With it bent over like that. So I'll tighten those three bolts down, and then I'll work on getting the puck in there and getting that bolt tightened down. Then once I do that, I should be able to set the engine down, take the strap off, and then we should be able to roll the car around on its own weight, I guess. There it is. It is sitting in the car under its own weight on its own brackets. The car is sitting on the ground. This was this side of the one I bent over, and this is the side that I welded. So this side will actually be taken back out, and I will be making the same type of mount that I did on this side. So that way it looks cleaner. But as of right now, it is sitting here on its own. It's not moving. Um, I'll show you the shifter inside. the shifter this is cool so I'll probably have to get a set of racing seats the shifter will sit right here I'll be able to get forward gears but I won't be able to hit hit reverse gears so I'll have to get rid of the old bench seat well I'll not get rid of it I'll switch it out and get I'll get a um, like I said a racing seat the only thing I found so far that is Weird is make it back up there. The car looks like a it looks like the back end squatted down, the front's way up in the air. The um the SR doesn't weigh hardly anything, so I'm gonna have to either figure out something for the front suspension. Um, either figure out some type of coilover setup or something. I definitely need to raise the back end up. I know you're able to take the coils, the leaf springs are pretty well rotted. I can take those off and raise the back end up. I actually like the back being down like that. It needs bigger wheels on it. But the front needs, needs way lower down. So 
All right, I think that's going to be the end of the episode of building that bracket. Like I said, I have to build another one for the other side. And then I'll keep moving on. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.